Hello everyone, welcome back to the Battlefront Survival Guide and another Star Wars Battlefront 2 video. In today's video, we are talking about the Specialist class, where I'm going to break down all of the weapons, star cards, and tactics that you'll need for success with the Specialist. As always, each class comes with three main abilities. For the Specialist, first you have the Shock Grenade, which slows enemies and does a minor amount of damage. Infiltration, which makes you undetectable to enemy scanners, marks enemies for your team, and equips an EE-4 blaster, which is a burst mode short-range blaster, much like the Assault Vanguard. Finally, the Thermal Binoculars, which reveals enemy heat signatures and spots enemies in line of sight for your teammates. In addition to the era-specific default blasters, there are four additional blasters that you can unlock for the Specialist class. The first is the IQA-11, which features more range and higher damage than the default. The attachments include the dual zoom, bolt speed, and improved cooling. This blaster is much better than the default blaster simply due to the increase in damage, but it's still a two headshot kill on all classes except for the heavy. Next is the A280 CFE which has a faster rate of fire and better cooling, but less damage and range. The attachments include dual zoom, burst mode, and ion shot. If you're not very good as a sniper, but you like some of the other abilities of the specialist, this blaster with burst mode is the one for you. This puts the specialist on par with the assault class as an effective combat unit. If you're accurate, you can get a lot of kills with this thing. I'm not sure why they offer a dual zoom on a gun with less range, but your mileage may vary. Next is the NT-242, which has the highest damage and range, but the lowest rate of fire and cooling. The attachments include the dual zoom, improved cooling, and ion shot. This is the best sniper rifle in the game, and is a one-shot headshot kill on all classes except for heavy. I always use dual zoom and improved cooling, but if you want to take out turrets or damage vehicles, you can use ion shot to do that. This is especially useful versus officer turrets on maps such as Crate, and takes them out in one shot. Finally, the Cycler Rifle, which was added in the recent update, has slightly more damage and range versus the default, with slightly lower cooling and rate of fire. The attachments include dual zoom, reduced recoil, and improved cooling. I'll be honest, I'm not sure why DICE even bothered bringing the Cycler Rifle into Battlefront 2. The benefit of the Cycler Rifle in Battlefront 2015 was that it fired an actual physical bullet which could penetrate shields. This version no longer does that, so it is actually pretty much useless when you have the NT-242. There's virtually no reason to use this rifle unless you just like the nostalgia from the first Battlefront. Now let's talk about the Star Cards. Each class can equip three of these cards, which grant certain boosts or other weapons and equipment to your soldier. The boost cards for the Specialist include Stealth, which makes you hidden from enemy scanners when firing your weapon, and gives you increased melee damage up to 125. Marksman, which means anytime you defeat an enemy with a headshot, it instantly cools your weapon and reduces the amount of overheat until the next time by up to 40%. Bounty Hunter, which increases battle points gain up to 20%. Expert Weapons Handling, which increases the duration of your weapon cooling success state when you activate the cooling flush in the gold area up to 66% longer. Survivalist, shortens health regeneration delay by up to 40%. Dice recently made a big change to the Bodyguard card. It used to reduce damage from explosions and toxins up to a maximum of 40%, but it now reduces all incoming damage when at critical health, which is 30% or less, and upgrades increase the maximum reduction to 45%. Brawler grants you health on a melee kill up to 100, and Resourceful reduces the recharge time of your abilities to 28% faster. Now for the ability cards. First, replacing the shot grenade is the improved shot grenade with a larger radius and a longer duration. Upgrades increase this duration to six seconds. The Stinger Pistol, which does damage over time and prevents health regeneration. Upgrades increase the damage duration to 10 seconds. And the Repulsor Cannon, which knocks down enemies. Upgrades reduce the recharge time down to 32 seconds. Replacing the Thermal Binoculars are the Improved Thermal Binoculars, which increases the duration that enemies are marked to 12 seconds. The Trip Mine, which is a tripwire activated explosive, upgrades reduce the recharge time to 16 seconds. 
and the personal shield, which creates a shield bubble around you. You can't fire your weapon while the shield is active, but the upgrades increase the shield health to 240. Finally replacing the infiltration is the scramble infiltration, which scrambles enemy scanners. Upgrades increase the scramble radius to 14 meters. Hardened infiltration, which reduces damage taken. The in-game menu doesn't display this, but upgrades increase your damage reduction to 25% and reduce recharge time down to 18 seconds. Finally, the kill streak infiltration, which replenishes active time on kill. Upgrades increase the time regained by 55%. Now for the tactics. In my opinion, the specialist class has the greatest variety of playstyles of any of the four base classes. The first and most obvious role is be a sniper. With the NT-242, the specialist can take out every class but the heavy with one headshot, and the sound design is very satisfying. On an open map, the thermal binoculars fully upgraded can mark a good number of enemies for a good length of time, helping your enemies see more targets. You also gain points for an assist every time a teammate kills a marked enemy. You have to know the map, however, as sometimes it's difficult to tell whether enemies you see are in your line of sight or not. On maps like the first phrase of... <coughs> phrase? Really? <laughs> On maps like the first phase of Crate, this is easy, as you can tell who's above ground and who's not. Geonosis is likewise easy, given the long range of flat ground. This can be more difficult on Hoth, however, as there are many hills and valleys. The best cards to play as a sniper are Marksman, which instantly refreshes weapon cooling on a headshot kill, Expert Weapons Handling, which will allow you to get off more shots, and Improved Thermal Binoculars to mark more enemies for your team. On certain maps like Hoth, where you can gain a flanking position as the Rebels, I will run Stealth to keep my position off enemy radar while firing. And the Improved Thermal Binoculars are also great to tell you where the enemy snipers are hiding. The other role is evident in the specialist abilities, and that is be an infiltrator. There are many ways to do this, but the most common thing many specialist players will do is use stealth, brawler, and personal shield. The shield allows you to withstand enemy fire, but you can still melee players, which with the stealth card is a one melee kill on every class but heavy, and the brawler card gives you health back for every time you do this. You can do this all while activating your infiltration ability, which also marks enemies for your team. This can get you a lot of XP with kills and assists if you get good at it. Sacrifice one of your cards for killstreak infiltration, and it's possible to keep that going for a good length of time. Or use scramble infiltration to mess with enemy radar, or use hardened infiltration to improve your survivability. The choice is yours. The third role is, of course, holding down the objective. The improved shot grenade is incredibly useful for slowing down advancing enemies, the Stinger Pistol is equipable perpetually and makes even the stoutest enemy, including heroes, retreat and rethink their approach, while the Repulsor Cannon can repel a number of enemies or, for added fun, send them flying off a ledge. Use the Trip Mine to get easy kills when someone rounds a corner or close off a choke point. A great card combination for this role is Stealth, Bodyguard, and your choice of ability card. I will usually use Improved Shot Grenade myself. As always, the best mode to level up quickly especially as a beginner or casual player, is supremacy. First, area capture objectives are the easiest to play because all you have to do is be in the zone. You will gain more points and XP and get bonuses for kills while in the objective zone. Supremacy rounds last the longest of any mode, so you will very naturally get more kills and more XP. Plus, with enemy AI bots, you will win more 1v1 scenarios. With the advent of co-op mode, it is now a great option for leveling up your classes and heroes. You still earn XP and credits, and fighting waves of enemies really teaches you how to play situationally. Do damage to enemy vehicles and heroes as much as possible, and focus on any destructible objectives. These gain more points than against infantry, so keep that in mind. Lastly, keep an eye out for double and triple XP events. You will level up so much faster if you play more during those periods. Follow the Battlefront Survival Guide on Twitter at BattlefrontSG as well as EA Star Wars to keep abreast of these events. Remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to make sure you receive more news and analysis such as this. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link in the channel description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.